Do you want to go to the science museum? Yeah, can you see the big rocket? Yeah. So maybe it's a spaceship. Oh, isn't this cool? You want to get in it? I don't think you're allowed because they've got, they've got the barriers up. You're not allowed to get in it, mate. That means don't touch... <laughs> that means don't touch it, mate. <laughs> with, your, with your grubby little mitts. What this is a very new insight for me, actually, that for, for you to be able to give love and to, and to receive love and to get into a very deep and meaningful relationship, that like you have to have that love internally. You have to love yourself. You have to have that respect and that's for yourself before you can truly give it out to someone else. So if, if you're going into a relationship or thinking about going into another relationship and you're not properly healed, then you can't give your full attention and full love to someone else. A couple of things for a guy to do if he comes out of a relationship is number one, focus on himself. And number two is get around other guys. And, and getting around other guys, going down the pub and having a couple of drinks, you know, it's good because you, you're getting that, that bit of banter, you're getting that connection with other, other guys. But I'd actually suggest that getting around other guys that, that are achieving things, that are doing hard shit in their lives. Um, that they're, they're seeking growth, they're not just out getting pissed every weekend, they're not out just doing lines or whatever that looks like every weekend. They're actually doing things that are actively promoting their own personal growth. And that's really, really strong for guys coming out of a relationship. I got this from Dr. Robert Glover, who wrote the book No More Mr. Nice Guy. He's a friend of mine, and we were talking the other day about how where men can really mess up, particularly when they come out of relationships, is that they will look to the feminine to give them love. So they might go back on dating apps, they might um, <laughs> go out dating immediately because they're looking, A, A for a bit of validation, but they're actually looking to receive some comfort, they're looking to receive some love. But here's the thing with masculine and feminine. The feminine typically receives, and it's the masculine that gives. And so where guys can really mess this up, and I can speak to this because I did the same thing, is that a guy walks out looking to receive love from a, woman, from a woman, from a female, but won't get that because it's, it's up to the man to give. Um, and then he will receive in, in return. Does that make sense? Yeah. Leo, I'm going to go, mate. Good day, kid. I'll give you one. Okay, I'll see you next week, buddy. Fist pump. Bosh. First meal of the day. What's that? First meal of the day. This is actually first meal of the day. Normally I would have a shake, but this morning was a little bit too mental, so I didn't have a shake. So, and something light. I don't like to eat heavy during the day. It slows my brain down. So not, normally, I actually won't eat many carbs during the day. Um, I'll keep it like protein, veg, that sort of thing. And then later, uh, on at night, backload the carbs. So I eat a lot more then. Makes me sleepier as well. Right. This is reality of owning a Porsche this, and, and being a father is, well, number one, your little boy's got to come in the car. But number two, they have big old car seats. <laughs> that, these, this thing does my head in. It's, uh, it's the glamour of um, having a car and having a child at the same time. <laughs> right, get that in there. There she goes. Look at that. Just by the millimetre it fits. It's all, it's all planned. I hope that fits. Yeah, you crack on, mate. Yeah, they stopped making the GT4s. So now the, the, the just the, they're a little bit more rare now. The, like the bigger, meatier cars, the bigger engines, people will want them because the government's pushing electric. Yeah, I'm considering at some stage actually getting it wrapped and getting it, and getting it sprayed. I want it. Well, why didn't you think of a BTS? Yeah.
Yeah, no, to actually get it um, wrapped in a different colour. I coach guys. What, with Jim? No, well, a bit, bit of Jim. You're a dating coach. Nah, <laughs> I'm not a dating coach. Albeit, I do help guys with dating. Would you coach guys? Everything. Just raise their standards in every arena. Yeah, and it depends on, on like, ultimately, like, what your long term is on the career. Yeah. The coaching thing is, is, is mate, don't you feel like you're getting a lot of baggage off people, though? I can handle it. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, but this, this, this is the thing: is that you, you, I do get the download of all the guys' emotional shit. But biggest, I want to hear the interesting problems. What's the biggest problem guys face? To get it's isolation, out? loneliness, just um, guys not being in the right environments. And it affects it affects a man. Are you serious? So I'm from India, so I've come here. It's one way of me getting into the country. Yeah. So that's oh, cool. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so obviously, I do want to start my own business later on. It's a coffee plantation back at home as well. Oh, amazing. Make What's stopping you from starting it now? Right now, I do want to get a bit more experience. I know that it helps. Uh, and also, maybe just build up some of my own wealth so I could invest in it by myself. Yeah, yeah. So also making it coming here. Network as well, so yeah. It's nice to, it's nice to be able to yeah. meeting people. Like so, you, so you want to start a coffee business? So we, I have a coffee plantation at the moment. Back in India. Back in India. Amazing. So uh, I love cars, I love cannabis, and I love coffee. So yeah. Those are, those are three the th domains. The three C's. I'd love to get into. Yeah, yeah. At some point in my life. Yeah. Just eventually get into. Yeah. Start earlier. Don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't try and make it fucking perfect. It's a typical thing for a guy. It's like, I need the perfect strategy. I need the perfect amount of experience. Be, be very imperfect with your approach and just and start something earlier. Because that, that business experience, you get it from doing the thing. Yeah, you get it. You get, and, and, and honestly, like if I had a great corporate career. I started my own business. I grew, I grew one business. Now I'm on the second business. If I was to look back and go, ah, oh, I would have started the fucking business earlier because I would have just learned those lessons a lot quicker. Get, get involved early, make all the fuck ups, you know, because then when you're in your late 20s, you'll be like, fucking hell, I've got five years experience of fucking running my own business. I've fucked up for five years and now I've got all this great experience. Now I know what I'm doing. I'm not even 30 yet. You're way ahead. As opposed to Don't wait for the perfect moment. And then realizing that you're, doesn't matter where you doesn't matter, mate. You have to, the, the, the point is to start. And most guys never fucking start. Because they want the perfect strategy, the perfect fucking thing. Does that make sense? It does, it does, it does make sense. But yeah, give it a bit of time, that's for sure. Or you just finish it. Start. <laughs> just start, mate. Just, just start with no, with, with no like outcome that you're going to make this a huge success. It's just like, hey, I'm just going to fucking start. And the next like year or two years, bring on the fuck ups. Bring, bring on like not knowing. Because then you learn. Because ultimately, the, the, the dawn, that feeling daunting is a fear, yeah. isn't it? And you know that every time you step into a fear, thing, good things happen at the out, on the outside of that. Whereas if you stay in your, in your comfort zone, because it's easy for you to say, I'll do it in five years or three years. It's easy, isn't it? It feels so comfortable. But you don't learn from doing that. Yeah, every time a fear comes up, that is the That's indicator. Like signal chart. Yeah, so it goes, it goes from this on the chart. Fear. I step into courage. Because cause, cause fear, fear is down here on, on a fucking consciousness level, right? On an, on an energy level, when you're in fear, you're actually, you're actually in quite a negative state. It makes sense. But up from here is courage. Courage, you're in a quite a positive state. Your energy is higher. When you're feeling courageous, it's just like, oh, I'm fucking going to do something. That's what you want to step into. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know. Good. Do it, mate. Update me on the on Instagram. <laughs> now that I know. You see though that that those two conversations that we had with two randoms were because of the car. Yeah. And I've noticed this the um, the car for me has actually been an investment. Hey, I want I fucking wanted it. Um, but the the amount of people that talk to me. Um, and, then, and then come into my world. Like those, those two guys, those random guys, are now both following me on Instagram. They're now going to see all my stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like they might, they might listen to my podcast. They might, you know, get a ton of value from that. And they might go, "Hey, do you know what? I want to work with Pete." Uh, but I've had guys doing that um, that I've just met because of the car.
and then they follow me. I've had one guy, two guys working with me because of that. So the car's like, and I didn't, I, I didn't actually think about that when I bought the car, I just wanted it. Um, but it's an investment. So many guys think fitness coach. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what, well, fitness? You had, you had a dating coach then. Mm. <laughs> that was the first time I've ever had that. Are you a dating coach? But that's a thing now. There's lots of dating coaches around. It's interesting how they say that you're serious about what you do. I suppose it's because there's not much around that, that bespoke as a service to men. There's not. There's, there's very little around with what we do for guys. It, it, it doesn't, it, it's, and it's not really well known. Uh, there like to be a space which is ultimately personal development to help a man become his best version. It, there's, there's lots of like niche, you know, you know, like that, dating coach, fitness coach, but like whole of life, raise your standard in every fucking area. It's, um, it's, it's very well unknown to guys. I would say what's lacking in most in most guys, like that guy there was 23, and um, but this doesn't just relate to the younger guys. This goes into the, the older guys as well. Is um, it's inaction, and it's having fear around taking action. Like the guy there wants to set up his own business, but was gonna, you know, wants all the experience first, wants the strategy first. You know, he'll do it, you know, five, ten years from now. Um, but that, I, I, I see that not only with the younger guys, but I see it with a lot of older guys as well. Um, but the, the, problem, the problem with doing that, or it, it becomes a bit of a fucking habit, is that you, you, you don't take the actions that you should do. You don't step into, the, like that guy was, he ultimately he's afraid because he's stepping into a fear. He's got fear there. So he doesn't step into that fear. It actually becomes habitual, just on the micro. like consistently not stepping into the things that scare the guy. He keeps doing that, it becomes your fucking identity. And before you know it, you're in your 30s or you're in your, in your 40s and you haven't, and you, you've gone most of your life without taking all the shots. And I, and I think too many young guys, well, and, you know, and, and the guys in the 30s, are too afraid of the failure, too afraid of what that might look like, whether that damaged their ego, you know, or it's um, what, other, what other people might say. And because of that, don't take the shot. And then, and then because they don't take the shot over and over and over again, they start lacking belief in themselves, which is a problem for a guy. <laughs> Four horses, one dog. Dubai. So what's, where's your head at for this year and London as well? So I know you've been looking at properties over here. Yeah, do you know, the whole Dubai thing has been on my mind for like a year. Like moving to Dubai has been on my mind for ages. And it was a week ago, I was looking at my, I was actually looking at my own tax. And um, I had actually coached one of my own clients uh, and we were talking around self-reliance. And my big thing for him was for him to become very self-reliant, not, not to be relying on anyone else. Like he can look after himself like financially, emotionally and so forth. And um, sometimes it's like the coaching that I will do for other guys is what I need in myself. And I thought, fucking hell Pete, like why, why have I not pressed the button on doing my residency in Dubai? Like why, what's holding me back there? And I was like, the way, and it was the way that I set goals Particularly over the last couple of years, the way I set goals is that the goal that I set is about who I need to become, not what I want to achieve. Like historically, I would set a goal like I want to get thirty thousand a month. Uh, you know, my, my, my income, I want that to be thirty thousand a month, and then I'll be like, oh, okay, what do I need to do to get thirty thousand a month? Well, it's the amount of sales calls, and it's the amount of outreach, and it's the amount of conversation, and and so forth. And that does work. That is effective, and those things are kind of required. But as soon as I started setting goals from like who I need to become, um, I, I, I became that man during the process. And then those, th those like outcomes of like 30K a month, da -da -da -da, they, they happen as a byproduct of, of who you become. So like for me, the, 
Dubai residency is for me to, to do that, that's a big shift. Like I have not moved countries before. That is, that's kind of like not normal. It's not in my existing paradigm. And for me to be that man, I got a fucking change in the process. I, I, and so I, I forced the issue. So pay for Dubai, pay for residency, pay, pay for the visa. And then I'm, I'm, I'm forcing that. And then in that process of me now figuring it out, how the fuck I'm gonna do that, I become that man who then achieves those sorts of goals. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's almost like you're, you're taking leadership. Absolutely. Um, and it's, so it's rather than, so say for example, you want to get to 20K a month or 30K a month, or 50K a month, whatever, whatever that number is for you personally. Well, that might be your, the next version of you, the, the 2.0 version of you. Well, what actions is that person taking? Like, like what sort of, um, how are they showing up day to day? But what things are they going to do this year? Are, is it that they're going to be sat behind the computer or is it that they're actually going to be on stage? They're going to be talking to hundreds of people. Is it that they're going to be on the big, the big, big platforms? And it's thinking about that. It's like, well, what's that person doing? And then how can I then do that now? So I think about that. And it's like, well, yeah, you know, for, for me to grow my brand bigger than what it is now, let's, and let's get on stages. Let's get on the bigger platforms and not think about me doing that in a year's time. How can, how can I make that 10X shot now and do that earlier?